Welcome to our lecture online. Now we're going to take a closer look at probability and looking at the differences between theoretical probability and empirical or experimental probability. We know that as we do more and more trials or more and more experiments, we expect the experimental probability to converge down to the theoretical probability. So here we can see that if we have a number of trials, and we're going to do 20 trials, of tossing a die six times, and the objective is to see out of those six times, how many times do we throw a six? We would expect the probability to be one out of six, so we call that the theoretical probability. But you'll find that the experimental probability is different. So if we do a certain number of trials, we may not get that same result unless we do many, many, many trials. Notice that we went all the way from as few as zero to as many as three. Of course, when we throw three sixes, that means half the time that we toss the die, we threw a six. Now we're going to keep track of what we call the relative frequency and the cumulative frequency. The relative frequency is the frequency of throwing a six in any given trial. The cumulative frequency is when we keep adding up the results and we keep adding up the total number of tosses. So notice here we had one out of six, that happened to be where the theoretical probability exactly matched the empirical probability. But then we threw it a second uh, six times, and notice now we have three sixes out of a total of 12 trials, so now our theoretical probability increased to 0.25. Then it dropped back down to 0.167, because on the next trial we had zero sixes and so forth. So you can see that the cumulative frequency tends to go towards, or tends to converge towards the, the theoretical probability as the number of trials increase. But it may not be quite as smooth as you might think. So it's kind of interesting to take a look at this, that later on in some later videos we take a look at more details. But first, the first number of trials, there were large fluctuations in the cumulative frequency. Notice we started where the the experimental frequency was exactly the same as the theoretical frequency, then we went way higher, back exactly the same, higher again, and then the fluctuations began to get smaller and smaller. That is very typical, that's what we would expect. Then if we take a look at the data, we find that after eight trials, we hit probably our last peak. We probably will never hit that cumulative frequency again, no matter how many times we try, because it tends to smooth things out. So notice that after eight trials here, we end up with an with a experimental probability of 0.229, which is much greater than the theoretical probability. Then notice we started getting closer, we started moving up again, closer, again we hit kind of a high but not as high as over here, and then from that value on we began to get closer and closer to that theoretical probability. Now, we don't know at this point how many times or how many trials we should have to get much closer to that theoretical probability, but we'll, we'll attack that problem later. Here we just want to get a feel for how we can see that after a great number of trials, we will get closer and closer to that theoretical probability. And that is how it's done.